What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back. It's your boy, Blue. This is a quick hill start tutorial for heavy US freight trains. We're using the BNSF ES44 C4 in Train Sim World 3, but this can also apply to other train simulators. We're on a 1.2% uphill gradient with a 5,800 foot train weighing about 14.5 thousand tons. Four locomotives in the front, three in the back and two in the middle, pulling about 87 freight cars. And to make things worse, of course, it's snowing. So to get started, reach down here to our control panel and flip on the generator field switch to on. Make Also make sure your engine run and control is all on. If you're in a, a different train or a different simulator, reach back here, turn on the banking comm, make sure that is set to on. That'll make sure that the train or the locomotive in the back and in the middle of the train uh, are also going to be applying power and brakes. We'll reach down here to our reverser and make sure we insert the reverser and set the reverser to forward. There we go. And then we'll reach over here to the black candle and make sure the independent brake is set to full application, which ours is, and the automatic brake is set to release, which it is now. While we're down here, we'll set our headlights to bright because, you know, US freight trains always have the bright headlights. And then we'll go up here to our control panel and the way you know that the brakes are actually released is if your BP or your brake pipe pressure is shown as 90 or close to 90. So here's 89, so it's not you know exactly perfect, which is basically released around 85 to 90 is good. In the rear is actually 80, so it's still slightly brakes are applied. Now I know this is actually confusing because when I was learning how locomotive brakes work, I was like, well, I don't understand all these numbers. All I need to know is most locomotive fully released brakes are 90 and sometimes depending on the train how long it is to consist uh, you can sometimes start moving even as low as 60. so basically the higher the number is the less brakes there are and the lower the number there is the more brakes so if this was zero we're basically on emergency stop i hope that makes sense one more thing to check uh depending on what train you're in or what sim you're in you also need to make sure that your brakes are set to cut in for this locomotive. To do it in this train, we're gonna go over to more options, which is F8. And then we're gonna go to operator controls, which is F4. And then auto brake cut in. So right here where it says auto brake freight, it's already cut in. So we don't have to worry about that. But if you just happen to be in a situation where it says cut out, or maybe you tried this tutorial five times and it wasn't working, well, make sure that your brakes are cut in. This applies for pretty much every locomotive on Train Sim World um, for US Freight and a lot, a lot of other sims as well. Also, there's an independent brake lead in this train specifically, which is F3, and make sure that is lead, not trail. So make sure it is lead and not trail. And then you can go back and you're set up, you're good to go. You can see our brakes are pretty much released, they're good enough. And all we need to do now is put in throttle. So we'll go here. Put our throttle into notch three. One, two, three. And that should be enough, especially in the snow or in the rain when it's really slippery. You don't want to push it any farther than three. Uh, and sometimes even two. You don't want your wheels to slip. Or we'll wait for our RPMs to rise. You can see on our UI, it's at 67 now. Also effort here, 67. That's what we like to see. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna slowly release the independent brakes, slowly. Don't, don't do it too fast, just slowly bring it back. I'm also going to apply sand because the rail is kind of slippery and frozen. Here's our sand right here. So we can apply sand, I'll be doing that as well. So here we go. So applying sand now, I'm holding the sand down and slowly bring my independent brake back. You can see it on the UI. Slowly, so not all at once. See, we're getting a little bit of wheel slip. You can actually uh, partially disengage the independent brakes. So right now, we're slightly moving forward and I still have 20% independent brake applied. So don't, you know, once you get kind of close to disengaging it, you can actually leave it applied to keep you from slipping and falling back. So still pulling it back, still pulling it back. And now we are released. And you can see, just give it some time. You may not see the train moving immediately. Just allow the train to catch the traction, catch the sand on the rails, and get going. So you can see we're slowly moving. I don't want to push it to notch four until I know we're already moving because I know that the wheels are going to start slipping. 
and there we go we are rolling looking good and as easy as that I can actually go ahead and get rid of uh, the sand now that we're rolling we can try to push it to notch four or however far we think we can actually make it if the wheels are not slipping you can keep pushing it even more and if the wheels do start slipping you can just bring the throttle back a notch or two and you should gain traction depending on how heavy you are and how bad the conditions are it's going to vary in different areas you could also be in a much <laughs> steeper gradient we're doing a pretty easy one here at 1.2 percent it's not too bad at all And it is as simple as that. I hope this video helped you out. I know that hill starts can be a challenge, especially if you're new to train simulators. But no matter what, remember, you have three choices. Give up, give in, and give it all you got. Peace, love, and God bless you. I'll see you guys next time, next video. I'm out.